Hello and welcome to a new episode of Review. Again, I apologize for my voice. The thing is, I'm probably better now, which sounds weird because I'm not. But the fact is that the month of November has been, or is, very busy for me. So I had to produce some videos ahead and simply couldn't wait for my voice to get better for this episode. So I apologize once again. But let's get straight into today's episode. And today we are taking a closer look at a BAE 146-300, or as I like to call them, AF-100, as it's pretty much the same aircraft. But let's look at the box, and here we have a really nice image of the aircraft. We also have the Brussels Airlines branding at the front, and if we turn the box around, on the back side we have the image once again. We have the original dimensions and some additional information. So let's look inside. And here she is, the absolute beauty, the Afro 100 from Brussels Airlines. Now, if you have followed my channel, you might know that I'm absolutely crazy about the Afro 100. It's not rational at all, but I really love this aircraft. But I will try not to go completely crazy about it. Now, this Afro 100 has the current Brussels Airlines livery, although it has been slightly adapted to fit on this aircraft. But more on that a little bit later. Because, as always, we start by looking at the aircraft on the tail section. And here we can see the Brussels Airlines branding on the vertical stabilizer, the full registration code, brusselsairlines.com, and, of course, the Belgium and the European flag. Now, recently, when I was reading an article about Brussels Airlines, I came across a fun fact. Now, the Brussels B, the orange B that they have as their branding, consisted of 13 orange dots when it was introduced. Now, there are, of course, some superstitions about some numbers in the aviation industry, and the number 13 is normally not really used in an aircraft. For example, you won't find a row inside an aircraft with the number 13. So some people apparently noticed that there were 13 dots and they complained to Brussels Airlines and actually made them change it. So now the Brussels B consists of 14 dots. Now I don't really know what the life lesson of this is, other than that there probably was a designer who didn't do his research. But anyway, let's move on and move to the front of the aircraft. And here we can see the Brussels Airlines branding and we can see the last two letters of the registration code and here we actually have the variation to the current livery because this aircraft has the current livery but it had to be adapted to fit on the Avro 100 and the adaptation or change in the livery is the placement of the Brussels Airlines branding now normally this would be in the white part of the fuselage but since the Avro 100 jet has the wing on top there wasn't really space for that so they had to move it down to this blue grayish area or whatever you would like to call this color but let's move on to some more details and if we take a look here on the side we can see the doors to the cargo compartment have been fitted if we turn the plane around, we can see on the underside of the wing, we have the full registration code of the aircraft once again. And then we have the engines, which have the best improvement to this aircraft. Now, I did a review of an Avrojet 100 from Air Berlin, and the main critique point from my side was the missing of any details in the engines. We had the engine cells, but there were no fan blades inside or anything else. This time we have them, and I'm really, really happy about it because it just makes the aircraft look much better. But, and unfortunately there is a but, this aircraft is also not perfect. And I really want a perfect Avro 100 jet. Unfortunately this isn't, but it's not so much a question of lack of details, than a question of aging. Now let me explain. Most of the parts of an Hapwings aircraft are usually made of metal and they don't really change. But some parts, like for example the horizontal or vertical stabilizer, the engines or the landing gear, are made of plastic. Now that itself doesn't need to be a problem, but I've noticed something on this aircraft and I've also noticed it on other older Hapawings models that I have. And it's basically something that happens when the plastic is white. It seems to get a slight miscoloration. Basically, it gets more yellowish. And in this case, it's quite noticeable as the parts around it are white. Now, what it is exactly that does this, I cannot say. I 
not really an expert in plastic. Whether it's sunlight that changes it, which could probably be the cause, or if it's simply just because the plastic gets old and changes color. I don't know, but it is something I noticed. And the fact that you pay a lot of money for an aircraft model, you kind of expect it to have a long life. Now with that we have reached the end of today's episode. If you have enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, that would be really nice. Or if you know around here, why not hit subscribe, that would be absolutely awesome. And don't miss out on the next episode of Review, where we will take a closer look at an Airbus A321-200 in a very special livery of Lufthansa. So you don't want to miss out on that. Now until then, thank you very much for watching, hope to see you soon again, I'm checking out and bye.